I want to bring awareness to people that not only can you survive something like this and go on with your life and create your life newly and not have to live in trauma and tragedy and, and the past, but also you can prevent it from happening to others if you'll, if you'll, if you'll talk. It's a parent's worst nightmare, but in this case, the nightmare was by a trusted friend and neighbor. When Jan Broberg was 12 years old living in Pocatello, Idaho, she went freely with Brother B on what she thought would be a horseback ride. Instead, she was kidnapped and taken to Mexico for 38 days, where she was brainwashed into believing the two of them had been abducted by aliens. And I woke up in the back of a motorhome with my wrists and ankles strapped to a bed with a little box playing in my ear. And I thought I had been kidnapped by the people on the other end of the box. About two and a half, maybe three days into this journey in the back of this motorhome, laying there in this box plane in my ear, they told me to go to the front of the motorhome, and there I would meet the male companion. And here was this man who, to me, was like my second father. The Doc Utah documentary, Forever Be, shares her horrific story and why she decided finally to tell it. I was now the special child that was going to have the child that would save the planet. And that's how brainwashing works. They take a familiar story and they twist it just a little bit so that the child or the adult, it feels plausible to them. They don't even, I mean, when people ask me, how long did it take before you were brainwashed? I'm like, I don't know, 10 seconds. Broberg said it was bad enough that she was kidnapped once, but she was taken from her room yet a second time, this time for four months. He went through a, a some kind of a trial and um, served 19 days in jail, and then he kidnapped me a second time, a year and a half later. Yeah, he came to my bedroom window. Jan's kidnapper, Robert Berthold, was never prosecuted much for his crimes. The second time, he went to a mental hospital after I was found the second time and spent, I think, about six months in a mental institution and then was released. And he, too, went on to remarry and to abuse at least six other women that we know of because they've gotten in touch with us and said this man raped me as a little girl. Jan's mother wrote a book about Jan's ordeal called Stolen Innocence, the Jan Broberg story, which is now turned into this documentary, Forever Be. Forever Be director Sky Borgman said even though the story happened over 40 years ago, it's still very relevant today. It's a huge problem and very few People are actually either helped or taken out of society so that they don't harm other children because it's usually not just one. It goes on and on and on and on, which it did until this man ended his own life. Jan's story will be a reminder that this misplaced trust is something everyone should be aware of, not to wake up to. My story is kind of an incredible story, but the common thread is that 700,000 children were reported missing last year. Over 700,000 cases of sexual assault and abuse of children was reported last year in the United States. And only 115 of those missing children were taken by a stranger. That's not even 1%. And do you know any of their names? No. And that's right here in the United States. That doesn't take into consideration all of the sex trafficking of children around the world. So we have some work to do. While the incidents were chalked up to lessons learned, the crime of desire, deceit, faith, and now forgiveness gives Jan the confidence to let others know they can move on. In St. George, Melissa Anderson, CEC News.